and welcome to episode 22 of our Project Hybrid Bike Build. So, what are we doing today? Well, I thought... Is that a banana in your pocket or are you pleased to see me? <laughs> no, it's a banana in my pocket. Uh, <laughs> good job. Okay, yeah, go so, um, at some point we're obviously going to go and sort out the power coating and organise in some paint. We are indeed. That's coming up. That's coming up in the episode. But first... But first... We are going to have a look at wheel bearings and sprockets and seals and brakes and all that sort of garbage that I don't really want to do but it's all part of it. So Unfortunately, no. we've got lots of new bits to replace and show you and let's get cracking. Yes. Got the intro. Crack. I don't know why I did that. So we've got the engine seal kit, we're not going to need that right now, but we are going to need the bearings for the wheels and the rear sprocket and the brakes. And we've got fork seals here as well and brake pads. So what are we going to start with first? Brake caliper. Brake caliper, so we're going to need the brake pads and the first thing to make sure the caliper frees off. Yeah. Now the thing with the brake caliper is that you can get, uh, thank you, hello, hello. You can get another one um, on eBay or somewhere like that, but quite often you can only get them in America, and that doesn't help when you've got a bike in England. I mean, I've bought parts from America, no problem before, but there's time and there's import costs and everything else. So we're going to try and free this off and make sure we can um, take out the piston, and we might have to buy a seal kit for the piston, but other than that, hopefully it won't be seized. So it's got fluid in it, but my concern here is that with the years of standing, with brake fluid being uh, hygroscopic, it, it absorbs moisture. So we could have a bunch of water in here which has corroded it, which hopefully it hasn't because it's a, an aluminium part. Well, the pads themselves don't actually look that bad. No, apart from where I've chipped bits off it. Well, yeah, but... No, I don't think it's done many miles. We might have to pop along and use an air compressor to blow the piston blow it out. out. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a moment! What? I bought an air compressor. Oh yeah. And a blowy punchy thing. Oh, we can do it here then. Let's fire on. it up. Yay! I'm going to try and push it back first. So first things first is just to stick it in the vise and see if we can actually push it in without using the compressor. I mean it's moving, I can see the fluid You can see a, a bubble out. there, yeah. And then... When you release it... It's come back in again, so it's, oh, okay. it's, it's moving a bit. So it's not seized? Somewhere. Well... Not as much as... not seized solid then. Yeah, I, mean, I think if we can get this pad out... Might be able to free the, it the off. The piston's got a rubber seal around it, so it, it yeah. should be okay. So first things first is just to remove this, and then if we need to get air in there, we can do. And blow it down the arm. So ordinarily, uh, I would use the book to uh, just check and see if there's a pin or something I'm supposed Let's to remove. Let's get that book. Well, we could do that, only I took it home for the wiring for the uh, little cluster, right. and I've forgotten to bring it with me. Well, uh, yeah, I'll go <laughs> yeah. So the book that I so highly so praised. Praised, and is it advocate? Is that the word? Uh, yeah, so yeah. that's such an awesome um, thing. Always, always consult the book. <laughs> yeah, I didn't bring it with me. <laughs> Who's a prat? Me! <laughs> yes. Never mind. Okay, let's uh, try and pry it out. other side came out quite easily just under the split pin and uh, it popped out and they're not very old at all these pads. Right, I'm going to try a bit more percussive maintenance. It 
in these kind of situations, a bit of plus gas is always helpful because it releases gunk. Gunk. Okay, so we've got rubber hose on there now. It's now sealing quite nicely. So, power away! Malcolm is farting around with that, I'm going to get on with other things. And the first thing I'm going to do is get this disc off. So with the disc out of the way, I can then paint the wheel when it comes to doing that. So this is a 12 mil, yes, 12 mil. Now, disc-wise, I'm going to use the original disc. Well, I say original disc. It's the market disc. That's in pretty good nick, but it was well on there. That was because it was in the way of the speedo drive. Right? Yeah. Right, obviously we'll keep hold of that for later. A bit with a shark out of the way, we can get to the bearings. They actually look pretty good. Yeah, but they actually have... look new. Well, they probably haven't been on there that long because we had the. Uh... I think the bike was rebuilt, ridden a few hundred miles and then parked up. I'm not sure whether it's worth changing them. Do it anyway, matter of course. Okay, okay. Well, I'm not sure whether it's worth changing them. Malcolm says change them. I can see his point, so we'll change them. This caliper, I think we'll soak it with flood gas and have another go at it. Yeah, okay. Maybe next week. Alright. If that doesn't work, have to replace it, I think. Yeah, okay. Unless somebody knows a way of getting that out of there, please. Yeah, if anybody it. does know a way of uh, removing the uh, pad and releasing the piston from that calibre, then please let us know. Something we haven't tried already. I mean, it's been sat for 20 odd years. It has. Not moved. So. Like you say, let's soak it in plus gas, put it to one side, and yeah. then crack on. Yeah. to have the right tools for the job. It does. And at the moment, we don't. No. Um, as we've put a load of plus gas in the um, brake caliper, we're going to let that sit in there and soak through. We also need to get some heat to get the, um, or try and loosen up the alloy of the wheel so we can get those bearings out. Uh, so, on to the next wheel. Let's take out this shaft. So we're removing the drum at this point. Yes. So this one comes out quite easily. Oh, so drum. drum is off. Drum. 
the shoes again the space are back in pretty good shape are they yeah yeah but like you say worth replacing yeah we'll replace them but keep them as they might be worth just keeping them just in case now this sprocket is a 34 tooth sprocket no it's not i thought this yeah. one's a 34 tooth sprocket the standard one for the 1977 yeah. honda was a 36 tooth one yeah the one I've got is a 38 tooth one, which is off the 1992 Honda uh, 404. But the purpose of that is that I get better acceleration. Okay, I don't get great top end, but it only does 104 mile an hour top end anyway. So chances are, as long as I get 90 on a track, whatever, it's fine. I mean, I'm not going to go over 70 ever anyway on a motorway or dual carriageway because that's the legal limit. Right, let's get this off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, typical, not 12. It's a 12 on the front, looks like a 13 on the back. Nope. That's not a 13. No, I'm just trying. It's in the wrong one. I'm just picking them up. Right, it's a 13. undo this circlip, what that is is they're pegs with a rubber thing on the other side that sit in the wheel so it's like a cushion drive between the sprocket and the wheel. But all that still needs to come out because well, it's got to yeah, paint the wheel. that comes out with the sprocket. So we just need to undo this circlip. Okay. So I think we can leave those in. Well we need to take them off for the sprocket change so maybe I'm doing that yeah. while we can. Nah. Distance. Okay, circle it off. Spock it off. These are pegs with, yeah, like, 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 like mine, that's a. Uh, a rubber bush basically wedged in the hole, but they're in actually really good shape, there's no wear on those okay. at all. I just want to check before we do anything else that the other sprocket is going to fit. Just wrap that one there, make sure it's... Looks right. Yep, yeah, holes line up, so that's good. So we can go ahead and put that one on, obviously not yet. No. What you can do is... Uh, they don't need to stay in the wheel, they can be fitted to that. They can, yes. Pair little holes in the bag and just kind of rip. Oh, lovely! Yeah, looks good to me. Shiny! Probably. This is the only problem with getting a 1992 sprocket and not a uh, 77 sprocket. Um, as you can see here, look, they don't sit in the groove, so we're going to have to slice out a little groove in each of these um, spline seats just shave the edge off yet so it sits nicely against here as you can see there's a gap there and there shouldn't be that's easily modified that's not a problem yeah you've got a bench grinder yes but yeah that's so that's that sort of dealt with yes Ish is a thing we can come back to they're in good shape we're just going to leave those okay good move it might not Okay, well, I do apologise that this video is turning into a very unprofessional video. It's turning into just a disaster, isn't it? Rubbing on them days, everything is just... It's, we, need, we need that book, which you forgot. Yep. Uh, we need a blowtorch, which I didn't buy. I have got one. Yeah, which you didn't bring. Which is not here. Oh, I'm not messing about like that. I'd rather have the proper thing with pegs on do it. And the same with this, we're going to have to heat this up. Yep. To be able to... And then knock it out from the other Get side. Yeah. Okay. Heat, drift, some sort of tool to undo that thing. 
So obviously, um, now I don't really want to be putting all this new stuff in anyway until the wheels have been painted. But we do have new shoes. Uh, let's just make sure they are the right ones. They look right to me. Yeah. Okay, well that's one good thing. So they are the right shoes. Yeah. What are we doing with this? Are we going to polish it up or are we going to black it? Uh, black. It's going to be black. There's no point polishing it because there's nothing really going to be polished on the bike. It's all going to be yeah. black. I mean, it wasn't the intention today to fit all new stuff yet. No, not really. We want to get it all ready, make sure it all matches up, make sure it all fits, get all the old stuff off. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get the bearings out. So, yeah, there's no point me cleaning up um, and getting all dust and crap in these with new bearings and stuff in. So in hindsight, it's probably a good thing we can't get it out yet. Yeah. Now this one is the front, I yeah. believe. Okay, 6302 yeah, R6, R6, yeah, that means rubber seals. Yeah. So yeah, 6302, so that's the right one. Okay, good. Now these are going to be black, and I think the rims are going to be black as well. You reckon? Well, there's nothing else going to be polished alloy on the bike. Well, there's going to be a couple of chrome bits. Just the odd bits and pieces. So I think it'll bring it all together if these are polished. Okay, alright, okay. Now when it comes to the forks, uh, originally these forks did not come with gaiters. Uh, these ones had gaiters on but they were an aftermarket thing. Now the reason why I want to put gaiters on is one, to protect the seals in there and two, because being a scramblery type bite they're going to look better than without I think. So. Um, these are a, uh, what do we call it, a 34mm fitment at the top and a 57mm fitment on the bottom. Which so fits, ones not. these ones are not, so they will fit there. And about 200mm long. And as long as I can find something very similar, or with the right size either end, they'll go on there quite nicely. Hmm. Um, the forks are going to be black, so uh, we will do that ourselves. But we have to get that cleaned up. Put some etch primer on there, mm -hmm. and then paint them. I'm not doing that now, but that's what we're going to be doing. However, I am going to go and find some of these. So one thing we are going to do is we're going to test to make sure that they're not leaking badly. But, yeah, uh, but also there's probably some muck down there. Yeah, so with this one, see, it still does a nice bit of bounce, and there's no leaks, nothing coming out. It's mm. nice and clean as it comes out. It's not left any scars on there. It did right. before, but I've wiped it once. So. so let's try the other one. Yeah, we've got the crap around the top of this one. Right. It's still plenty of bounce in there, but it feels like there's a bit of air in there. Yeah, there's some scars around there. Yeah. We did have uh, some leakage. We did. From uh, the other side. The, the other, other side. The one, yes. now. the one that we did first, so that must have gone dry. Yeah. <laughs> but that's why, because it was leaking. Yeah, so we were having drips of oil on the floor, so it definitely had something coming out. Definitely needs seals. But yeah, I mean, we'll have to get a, a, a seal hooking tool. Tool, yeah, something else we're So, seal hooking tool. Yeah. Um, heat. Heat and some uh, circlip remover tool. Right, one thing we do need to do before we get these over to the powder coaches is, is that this has to come off. Yeah, and there's a metal seat there, and then this rubber seal. I'm hoping that if we drive that metal seat there, it will push the whole thing off. So, try and uh, grab hold of that because it's going to try and bugger off. Let's try and knock that off. So they should be able to mask the shaft and our bearing seat for us so that we don't get powder coat all over it. They'll then blast that and uh, powder coat it in our colour. 
Do you believe in this case is black? No. Nope. Isn't it? No. Nope. Because that's the grey box, is it? That's the gunmetal. Oh, it's the grey box. So yeah. So in this case, it's going to be grey. Gunmetal grey. So, another job done. Yeah, we've done something. Yes, do have the set. Now this has the uh, top and bottom uh, bearings and um, seals and all and sorts washers and washers. Yeah. So we're all good to go. So before this swing arm goes, we've got to take these bushes out. And I think there's probably something up this end we need to do something with as well. So both these bearings are in good condition, so we are going to keep them and we're going to empty the hole and then fill it with a rag. That's the easiest way to do it. Got most of it out. So actually we're taking the bearing races out as well, so... Yeah, it was super easy. They're just knocked out quite simple, so all we've got to do is um, ask them to stick something in the end there when they shot blast it yeah. and powder coat it and uh, that's that done. Right, okay, now what we need to do is load the car up and get over to the paint place and fabric, uh, powder coating place. Yes, let's do that. Place. Well, let's have a little tidy up and then load the car up. Yes. Excellent. Might stop at McDonald's on the way. That sounds good. So we're down here at Aero Coat in uh, St Olives near Great Yarmouth and this is the colour we're going for, I don't know if you can see there, it's like a bluey gunmetal and that's going to be on the frame and then a satin black on the other part so they're dropped off and we shall return in a couple of weeks to pick them up. So we're here at Panel Master in Great Yarmouth and we've spoken to Paul who is going to very kindly paint this all up for us. Yep, uh, we've marked off a couple of bits here that have got uh, a, like a slight indentation and he's going to smooth those over and fill them and then these are going to be painted the burnt orange that we've been down and chosen the colour yeah. we're not going to show you that just yet because you'll see that when we are reassembling the bike so we're dropping these off here and we're heading back home good stuff so that is it for this video we'll be back very soon with the progress on the bike and masses of progress on the Mustang with a huge haul of parts arriving including the engine, suspension and loads of other stuff. That's super exciting right? Absolutely. <laughs> so then join us for that and until next time please don't forget we have our giveaway, we have our logo competition and until next time please ride and drive carefully but have fun. Bye bye.